Hey, hello, I am Kubo and uh, I will be bringing to you uh, the League A match between uh, Tracer and Hakka of the Dominion League. Uh, it is uh, their first match of Season 62, I believe. And uh, yeah, this should be a pretty uh, pretty good match, I will, I have to imagine. And uh, we have our first kingdom. And uh, this kingdom has chapel, so Tracer just opened, or Hakka just opened chapel on the two if I was thinking about it too much. Uh, which is understandable. Um, and uh, we have to, f and Tracer has a four free, so they have to actually think about the, their opening before buying their first card. Alright, so what's going on here? We have. Um, Collection, which is um, a very central card to most boards, usually um, requires building um, building a big engine with a uh, collection as payload. And here our draw is a little sketchy because the only two cards that draw are Herald and Journeyman. Okay, technically Shantytown could draw, but uh, I am not playing a deck that Shantytown will be drawing in. So, mm -hmm. mm. so I think those decks will have to be using Herald as the village, um, because Shanty Town is again like not a very strong village, and therefore they have to have a lot of actions, and the collections do not really work well with having a lot of actions in the deck. I mean, on one hand they do because you they want you to buy a lot of actions. On the other hand, um, I would think that, uh, okay, oh, what am I trying to say? Uh, on the other hand, uh, collections are really awkward of heralds, so uh, we'll see how that uh, uncovers. Tracer uh, chooses to enhance a copper into a chapel on a four, which makes quite a bit of sense to me. Um, we're just trying to uh, we're trying to get our trashing going. Uh, the Haka buys an artificer, which is one of the cards that is not horrible to collide with a chapel. And then chooses to top deck a herald just in case his chapel bottom decked, which did happen. So Haka, um, very nice spot here to avoid uh, getting very far behind from uh, the possible bottom deck chapel of this play. Mm. Meanwhile, Tracer has to buy a silver so that uh, they can hit a price point to be able to hit five. And Haka is just going with uh, all of the deck. Do you? Already try to discard for a collection, or do you take another trash here? As technically, if you play an artificer and then play a herald, you always draw your chapel, so you can always trash with it. Mm. It does run into trouble if, if you're trying to discard with an artificer, but you can count however many cards you can discard in order to, uh, and how many cards do you want to still trash. And I don't think that's too bad, uh, all in all, because you'll have five, is it, you'll have five cards in hand, six, no, you'll have a six card hand at the end of this turn, uh, and sometimes a seven card if uh, the Herald hits the chapel. So you can just discard two for a Haven or something, right? No. No, you have, you can only discard one, so that's a, a little awkward uh, in order to trash fully with chapel, but you probably don't even want to trash fully with chapel. You probably want to keep some coppers around to be able to hit price points still. If you have enough actions in the deck, you can actually use Artificer to discard actions and then hit those actions with Herald again. Which uh, is something that I expect to see here because these decks are very clean and they're not going to have 
many cards in them at some point. And that point is probably in like a turn or two. How come there's it this way? I feel strange because if the chapel is the bottom card here, we wouldn't hit it. We wouldn't draw it. I'm not sure that I understand why we did it this way. I mean, maybe we didn't want the treasure chapel, but that would be very strange. I, I would understand that even less. I still think you want to get rid of the estate. You want to get rid of some of the copper and. Uh, so that your deck can uh, start running on the actions and collections. And there is a lot of bricks in this deck and they're gonna be called collection. So you really want to get clean rather quickly, I would say. And right is actually sort of useful as an infinite supply of non-useless actions that uh, work with collection. Which, I mean, there you could do b better things than uh, buying right, maybe, but maybe not because maybe buying Haven for points is not gonna be that great. Yeah, it's a really delicate kingdom. This one, um, I probably would be taking uh, a lot of time too. It's just like you don't really want to mess anything up. Okay. Yeah, I, I like that. Although this did just start Brepard, so <laughs> I'm not uh, I'm not sure that's gonna continue. But uh, I'm not sure how many um, how long the feature match has been going for. It hasn't been that long, right? Haka chooses to just put more heralds in the deck. It's pretty sensible. Uh, they only trust an estate, so they just. I guess they want five coins in deck for collection. I'm not actually sure. But, like, I mean, that, that has to. I, but you can gain and play collection, so that's like not a concern with Artificer. Right, well, one of the Heralds missed. This is probably one of the worst orderings of the deck for Haka. Uh, that didn't ruin his starting hand, so. But I, I think he'll be fine still. Uh, no. More heralds. I, I, okay. I. I mean, I guess we want the deck to be consistent, but like we, we gotta add payload at some point, right? Like, surely there, there's gonna be a moment where you're gonna be like, I really want payload in this. Like, I really want a collection. Yeah, there we go. Okay, nice. And we top decked. What four coppers? Three coppers in a chapel? That's um Yeah, that that's probably not what we wanted to do, but that's what we ended up doing. There's still coppers that this Herald can hit. So this could end up in a not very great scenario for Haka. Oh, I guess um, Haka is trying to um, play collection. Um, the the way Haka is trying to play collection is uh, they're trying to uh, only match the collections that Tracer is doing uh, while having a stronger engine to, so that they can play more of them. Which is a pretty consistent way of uh, winning collection kingdoms, I would say. But with an inconsistent engine like this, I think I'd much rather just try to play for a point lead and try to get the collections quickly, rather than uh, rather than this. Yeah, 
Oh yeah, Shanty Town. Not great <laughs> when it's gonna get randomly played throughout your turn, and it's pretty likely to be randomly played throughout your turn. Alright, what I really want to see is, is these coffers gone. They're not doing us any favors. I, I just don't want them in the deck. This. Wait, wait, yeah, sing. Does this make me evil? What is that song? Or is that not a song? I don't know. It's like I'm, I'm Polish, so I don't really understand a lot of the references to English culture. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I. All right. <laughs> cool. Um. Tracer is um, making good use out of um, Enhance here. I, I really like that, getting rid, rid of the chapel, not having any trash in their deck. Uh, meanwhile, Shantytown. Uh, uh, Haka's deck is like, finally coming online, but it still has a lot of copper and it has less collection. And Okay, it has heralds. It's just quite nice, I suppose, for being able to continue whatever they're doing, but uh, yeah, I I don't know, like these coffers are just in the way, right? Like I'm not imagining this. But I just kind of hate having them. <laughs> you could discard the coffer and the chapel and Oh no, that, that completely doesn't work. Never mind. Yeah, you just like you just gotta get more collections here. And, all right, and Haka is coming around to that, regaining another one here. And they're putting more more heralds. Tracer does not have a herald still, which is interesting to me. But they don't need one if their deck has four cards that they want to draw. I guess so. Like, it's it's fine for now. It's still, um, yeah. Like this, this is all Tracer really needs to be drawing for for the most part. <laughs> I guess they will start uh, being in need of the the journeyman or shanties or whatever uh, now, but uh, they do have a lot of collections. So as long as I can draw them all, I think that will work out very well for them. And Haka is just like struggling for payload here still. Which is very surprising for to me because it looked like a great opening from Haka and uh quite subpar opening for Tracer. Um, I might also eat my words here because Haka can very easily get the last two collections and on top of that throw in like a haven. It's not ideal to put at the top so maybe you don't do that but you could. Or you could just trash a coffer. Maybe trashing a coffer would, would have been better here. Oh well. Mm. I guess they, they both have an even amount of collections and Haka just has more stuff in the deck and I assume the stuff is good? Question mark? Not exactly sure about that, but I mean it's doing its job. And Tracer now really needs to get engine pieces because this this deck is just not going to go very far without uh, some journeyman or some shanty towns or some heralds or whatever really is needed um or we could just buy a lot of rides i guess that also works and 
drawing the deck that way. Okay, that I completely missed that. You can do that, yes. Uh, <laughs> okay, so... Yeah, the... Yeah, I, I completely missed that. It seems pretty powerful. Um, the problem is Tracer is getting a point lead, but they're not progressing the game in any way. Oh my god. Uh, I was gonna say that uh, if Haka just uh, also buys five rides every turn and ga gains a card of Artificer at some point, they're going to be ahead enough to be able to, be able to buy... Uh, more cards or because there's also a cauldron that you can use for plus buy and eventually it, as long as they're keeping up on points they can outscore uh, a tracer but um yeah but uh if tracer is going to have a point lead he can use that point lead to uh, start building and uh well the goal is very simple to like Run down some piles, I think. Oh yeah. Uh, go to hell with that shanty town. It's not been very useful. I agree. Uh, I definitely want to see four rides here. I just want to be buying actions with all of my buys every turn so that I can maintain this point lead. Because this way, Haka, the only way he can chip away at the, this point lead is by gaining a cauldron. But just kind of inev inevitably will drain the curse pile. And uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure that draining the curse pile is very good for Haka. Because uh, it, the Tracer can deal with the curses rather easily, especially now that they have an Artificer. Uh yeah, I'm not not sure how uh, how Haka recovers this uh, this big point cap. One collection still at the bottom. I don't think these last cards are actions, so you have to be a little careful here. I mean, I think one of them is a chapel. And I don't think Haka has ever bought an enhanced this game. Right? So I don't think they've ever used that part of the kingdom. Which I would think is pretty nice in chapel kingdoms, but uh, they are a player. They're a league players and league champions, and I'm not. So. Uh, I might be wrong on that, especially since I'm not uh, not that uh, sure about it. Anyway, um, what's down there? We can draw five if we really try six seven, but I, that six seven looks very sketch of shanty, and maybe we can draw another one of herald, so we can discard up to five. Yeah, right does make it into a uh, cantrip that scores, uh, what, six every turn? Yeah, five, five collections and a silver is basically making collection into a cantrip that uh, scores six every turn. You do have to spend all of your buys on it, which is not ideal. But even if you treat it as a cantrip that scores scores five every turn, I think that's pretty good. Uh, if you just uh, have five collections and you buy five horses. I'm not sure this is all over over because Tracer is going to have to take a long time draining the piles down. And Haka does have like more engine pieces in their deck, so they can do more things. They can gain the cards faster, including cauldrons, and maybe recover the the VP difference. 
and cauldrons might mess with uh, tracers uh, tracers deck the problem that Haka does have is uh, they need to get rid of these stupid coppers because like these coppers have been messing them up for such a long time and like they need to go <laughs> uh, yeah uh, I'm thinking the curse pile will end the game. Um, I mean, it's not about the curses; it's about the fact that Cauldron has plus buy, so um, you can use Cauldron in the same way as, as Collection to buy more rides a turn and uh, uh, gain more points with the collections that you do have. And the giving away curses is just a side effect that it doesn't stop Tracer, but is slightly annoying. It also ends the game, but it doesn't end the game as quickly as um, you would think, because it doesn't... Uh, like, Tracer cannot really buy out curses to end the game, um, because his curses are... Oh. Because him buying curses, scores not only score loses him points from buying the curses, but also doesn't score him points from spending his buys on actions. Uh, so it's actually very difficult here to uh, empty the curse, like buy out curses and empty the curse pile uh, with how little points we have. Alright. Haka needs a cauldron like yesterday. Uh, Tracer could gain a cauldron, yes. And I think they should gain a cauldron. Like I don't see that much of a reason why not. It's just like, I'm still like under the impression that Haka's deck should be better at gaining cards because it has more actions that draw. Yeah, Tracer has less overdraw, that's true. So it's, so Haka should have an easier time putting stuff into their deck. But it, like the, the way this game is going doesn't actually confirm that. I think it confirms the opposite. I think Tracer has had an easier time adding things to their deck. I think Tracer's turns have been a lot smoother than Haka's here. Yeah, being perfectly consistent is uh, pretty damn good. Especially in a kingdom like this, where the game actually goes on for a long time and having a dot turn just does end up in a pretty much a disaster of a situation. Because these decks are improving, not by much, but by a little bit every turn. And I am going to add to that that um, trashing coppers um, seems to be winning too, which I just, just these three coppers they they bother me a lot. Like we we put six heralds in our deck, five heralds in our deck, uh, Asaka, and we have eight treasures in there, which. Okay, three of these treasures, uh, five of those treasures kind of have to be there, because that's um, that's how this deck functions. But one of these doesn't, and uh, I would like to not have that. Or three of these don't, and I would like to not have those. I was wondering about that shanty versus horse. I I am surprised that Tracer w went with a Shanty. I don't think Shanty accomplishes uh, much more than a horse. Like it, it's just not a card that helps you draw here, I don't think. It just, like, it's just going to get stranded in some random hand and it's going to be a stop card. I would think. Alright, Haka gets a Cauldron too. It's good to see. And then they proceed to discard it. Um, it's fair enough. As long as they can draw it back into it. 
Shanti, oh, Shanti doesn't hands into a five. Oh. Yeah. It's just, it's so inconsistent for Shanti drawing two here. That it's just, like, it is just worse than, than a horse, I would think. Like, I'd be surprised if that Shanti for Tracer drew, uh, drew to twice, uh, this game. And actually, no, it needs to draw, uh, needs to draw two. Um. How can I had better trash? Uh, it needs to draw two, two more times that it doesn't draw, right? Because, uh, that's what, uh, actually determines the excess draw and also... Uh, adding draw earlier is better than adding draw later and all that. So, at the end of the day, I just think Shanti's not very good. <laughs> yep. Now that we have a curse and we kind of have to play our chapel because I assume we didn't trash it. Yeah, we didn't trash it. We should probably throw some coppers into the mix too. I, I really hope that we throw some coppers into that mix with with the chapel and the curse because we really don't need all of this money Like these coppers, like with artificer, like with artificer, removing a copper is uh, money neutral next turn anyway because they are stop cards. And with uh, with herald, uh, if herald hit like anytime herald hits the copper, that copper was worse than just a stop card, right? So. It is, they're just like straight up worse than uh, stop cards here. And also, how awesome would that be if we could uh, take an artificer and discard uh, a bunch of actions and then hit those actions with Herald, right? There's, there's a lot of benefit to not having coppers and like having the least stop cards possible in the deck. So please, for the love of God, Haka, trash those coppers. <laughs> don't you don't need them. You don't need the too many this turn. Thank you. <laughs> Alright. Hmm. Haka kinda threatening the pilot. Um not really, right? It's um A seven buy, yeah. I guess we can buy uh, havens. Yeah, we can buy, buy six havens and uh, grab two heralds. Yeah, that is fair. Uh, the problem is Haka just took a turn when they um, increased their points by a lot, and they still have less points than Tracer. And I kind of assume that uh, Haka and Tracer score about as many points each time they uh, they take a turn. So. I would think that uh, I think that Tracer's deck is just threat. Like Kaka is not actually threatening any pilots because uh, trade like the points don't match. Like, uh, I'm terrible at speaking. Uh yeah, Haka is just not gonna be able to outscore Tracer, so he's not actually threatening anything. Um, seven by plus two artificer wins is here by. Uh, well, the artificers, artificer gains don't give you points from collection. So, and Tracer is about to gain, uh, um, yeah, Tracer is about to gain also seven buys on five collections, 35 points, the same as Haka will. So, 
now Haka is just not threatening anything because they scored the same amount of points every turn. What would be pretty great to do for Tracer now is to threaten something though. Because Tracer can just buy any like or gain any seven action they any seven actions they want. And I don't think Haka is threatening anything. Haka would need to gain nine actions, so they would need to play both artificers to gain cauldrons and then buy nine actions with all of that. Which they need to be exactly two cost actions because Haka doesn't have money for anything else. Or I guess they could enhance too, uh, enhance horses or enhance chapel or whatever. But no, they, they don't even have money for enhance, right? Because it's just... Like, if Haka uh, takes both artificers to gain a cauldron... Oh no, the, then they give away free curses too when they buy. Um, so that gets them into a tie situation. Unless, if they don't trash their curse, that gets them into a tie situation. And if they do trash their curse, then... That gets them a win, I think. Oh god, this is difficult. 9 times 5 is 45 points. I might just be off on my math. They're 42 points behind. Oh no, they're 42 points behind, so... Uh, gaining a cauldron... So they can gain a cauldron, then spend eight buys on actions, and then they have a free gain to gain anything else they want. Uh, Tracer actually threatens winning, probably. I do, I do wonder if that line is realistic for Haka. Oh no, uh, that was assuming that they gain both cauldrons still. They, they only give away free curses if they gain uh, two cauldrons. So if they gain two cauldrons, then um, they can spend eight buys on actions. No, they don't have enough money because uh, heralds and havens are too expensive. Um, because they only have 18 points in the deck in that line. Uh, at all times, I think. So, I do not think Haka has a possible win anywhere. Unless they would, like, magically create a coin. Which they could artificer for artificer, but they don't have that kind of overdraw, I don't think. Oh no, they have a copper, right? So, so there is a line. Gain two cauldrons, buy six havens, and ha enhance into herald three times. No, 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 no. That's too many, too many things. Right, that's that's too expensive. All right, I'm just like uh, rambling here. And I don't think anyone is with me at this point. Anyway, um, I think uh, Haka has some lines that are very close to winning with uh, gaining cauldrons and buying out havens and heralds. Sometimes, sometimes using enhance, but I don't think it quite gets there. Though maybe Haka proves us wrong, we'll see. Um, for Tracer, though, on the other hand, this seems pretty straightforward if they get a turn. Just gain two Heralds and buy out uh, Havens and Heralds. And I think they have enough money for that because they have extra Silvers. They do need to be able to draw. 
enough for that to happen, which might be a little bit of a concern, but we'll worry about that when we get there. I guess like one of the best lines for Haka is to just gain the two cauldrons anyway and throw three curses into Tracer's deck and hope that does that does anything. Because Tracer only does have uh what seven nine gains, so four curses plus Oh no that um, nine gains, but they can give away one curse. Uh, they can maybe give away more. All right, it's kind of difficult to uh, throw curses uh, yeah, tracers away. It seems like. Hmm. Yeah, it's very difficult. It's a very very difficult spot for Haka here. I'm very unsure too what the what the gain targets should be with artificers i mean like if you can start doing the artificer autopile and if you have enough card draw to do that for like, or, or just like gain and play one or two artificers, then you might actually get there with that one extra coin. Hmm. Yeah, but it's very difficult. I mean, if we wanted to use enhance, this this haven doesn't really do anything. This doesn't look like a lot of cards that we could use. This chapel also doesn't do anything. That's two enhanced targets. I mean, that. There, there is a chance that Haka gets there. Very slim one. <laughs> and they're probably calculating that one. Um, and it, it is a decision that they kind of need to make now because if they just throw three curses into Tracer's deck, then Tracer is not going to have to have that hard of a time winning here. I am uh yeah I have this is like one of these spots where I'm really glad to not be playing this kind of game. Because you do actually need to be very precise, and uh, it's very easy to miss something, and then your opponent usually wins if you miss something, because it becomes a lot more clear to them now, uh, after the turn passes. And there is no worse feeling than ending a turn than realizing that you missed something, and you're actually losing. I do also wonder if Haka is still like a little upset at himself because uh, he was definitely very ahead at the start of this game and uh, the, he has to realize now that uh, he's pretty behind. I guess the the other match uh, did end. How did that go? 
Uh, how was the the commentary for the featured match? If anyone was there. It went fast. Yeah, that happens a lot in the lower divisions. Uh, I I remember from the the charts. <laughs> King Scratch uh, on a Le Chalice. Yeah, that is a pretty fun play. Oh, we have a province. Um, okay, uh, that that is a way to score points. I I won't deny that. I don't think that's gonna move the needle much, but maybe. Yeah, King's Cash and Endless Chalice. I mean, it's if we if we are playing a money deck and we want a lot of coins at the start of every turn. Yeah, that's the question is, I guess, why is King's Cash and our money deck? But yeah. Let's not worry about that. The board with inventor to the end bounty hunter and virtual coins. Yeah, yeah, let's let's not worry about that that much. Is this province the right play? Uh it would be better to grab the plus by source a aka cauldron. Uh I would have grabbed the cauldron, but maybe Haka is worried about piling out uh, about Tracer piling out on Curses and Havens next turn. Which is a very realistic concern. So... Man, uh, I'm, I'm not a fan of this province, but I also haven't found a line that I like. Yeah, <laughs> exactly what Mr. Guy says when all plays lead to the same result. Is there... Uh, are any of them right or wrong? Just like, I'd like to say that something else is better, but no, nah, yeah, fairground is an option. <laughs> um, I was assuming Haka is already lost, uh, so uh, I would. I agree with uh, that implication. All right, and now we're undoing. Sure thing. I oh, wanted to set aside something different with Haven. Sure. At this point, I, I assume Haka is just clicking cards in some order and hoping it works out. It's just this. I don't know. Like, there's this situation where you're like thinking for a long time and then doing something and then calling an undo. <laughs> yes. It, this is something like when when you drop that random undo, uh, your opponent really knows that uh, you weren't like you were thinking about something completely different uh, throughout the uh, the turn, and then you realized, uh, oh well, I that none of that works. So let's just go for something and. And then you do that something that is not very well thought out, and then you start making mistakes, and it's just all, all a mess. All right, if we are concerned about piles, we should probably buy right seven times. And how long will this game take if no resignation? I would say Haka ends this turn, and then Tracer wins on their next turn. It's a very likely scenario. Yeah, I, I love collection. I think collection uh, has created like a, has created this sort of different kinds of games uh, where 
like it does replace goons in in a way because the the games feel pretty similar to what the the goons games felt but without the oppressive attack part yeah uh and if you hate buying green cards um then the collection is for you. It does have this like sort of effect where uh, every like collection games play a lot different to most other Dominion games, which I think Dominion is a lot about uh, games playing out differently uh, from uh, under the impact of some card being in the kingdom. So I think collection uh, is a really nice fit. Uh, collection Stampede is, uh, well, if you randomly uh, roll that out of the box, you just uh, put one of these back to the box and you replace them with something else. And uh, if you roll it online, then you agree that if that's a stalemate, then you move on with your lives. And it's fine. <laughs> I'm not really thrilled about debating Collection Stampede that much. And if your opponent really wants to play out a collection stampede game, then you just like pretend uh, while you're ahead on points, then you just like kind of try to start trying to pile out. And if you end up failing, then oh well, uh, you didn't like playing the game out that much anyway, so it's fine. It's all about having fun. And I think collection is very fun in like 90% of the kingdoms and most yeah I I don't see any card that would be better to buy than uh, a horse here seven times I don't think there is this is like considering options and debating life uh, yeah, mm. trying to see a path to victory or a path to the next game, perhaps. I mean, Haka is a um, rather slow and methodical player. So I am not surprised by this thing at all, and I think we might have uh, quite a bit of those during the match. Alright, we don't want to play old... Oh! <laughs> Alright, that's cute. Um, yeah, so we did not want to lower the curse pile. Therefore, uh, we've just decided to not play the cauldron. I, that's way too fancy. I don't think there is any merit to playing like that, but... Uh, well, <laughs> that is definitely how Haka played it. Yeah. Like, one thing about this uh, situation is I do think that Tracer was threatening a pilot in an ideal world. Also, I don't think we live in an ideal world here, and Haka is behind enough so that uh, he definitely doesn't want to be in Tracer's ideal world. So, uh, can anyone explain why Haka might be afraid of giving out a curse? It is because um, the curse pile is. Um, is already pretty low and Tracer could possibly buy out the curses uh, in our, uh, to be able to win as well as uh, buying out the free heralds which uh, they're gonna do anyway <laughs> yeah um, Haka was scared of, a exa of exactly this happening which happened anyway <laughs> So uh, that's game. All right, one zero tracer, and uh, tracer goes first in uh, the next one. 
Ooh. You could get a pillage and uh and then lurker it back and then pillage again and that sounds kind of funny. And there's also minion which discards them to four so that uh pillage doesn't really do <laughs> a whole lot, so uh and I don't think there is a way to draw them a card in any reasonable way. So Minion, why why does Minion have to ruin the fun? So what am I actually thinking of playing here? I I assume this is just minions. I believe didn't one of these players say that, uh, didn't Tracer say that they really don't like Minion or something? And maybe I'm confusing them with someone else. Anyway, this, this one looks like very much a Minion Kingdom because the only way, other way to draw cards are, okay, well, there are two. There is Caravan and there is um, Sybil that can draw cards. And none of them are particularly exciting. And also trashing is not that great uh, when it comes to trashing your starter cards. And Tracer gets the cut burst to annoy Haka and make them not hit five in which, uh, in response to which Haka just like grabs a, a minion. So, I wonder if Tracer's plan is just to transfer a bunch of minions and then put them all in the deck. Um, I wonder if Academy is worth it. I'm not sure what Academy really does because most of these actions are non-terminal. The only terminals here are Cutpers, Pillage, and Herb Gather. Which plus by I think is better as uh, mining growth. So I don't really see that much purpose in uh, um, in going for academy, and also there's plenty of village. What? What was that flip from Haka? Um, okay, uh, may I just like move over that. I, I don't think there was any reason to think that Tracer is going to have a good hand there. It's just. I think that gets them into the shuffle that uh, the minions are in, but hmm. doesn't matter that much. This I do kind of wonder about, though, because my instinct here was to trash the two minions. I guess this also grabs all the remaining minions, so that's fine. Oh god. Oh. Oh my. That that is a hand that you don't want to see as Haka. Man, this minion card. <laughs> it certainly isn't great, is it? Uh if you don't love me, you don't have good taste. Eh. Eh, no, I... <laughs> yeah, flipping it into copper hands. Haka did not have a turn yet. Which, having free lurkers does not help having a turn, I will admit.
Yeah, um... Yeah, this minion no trashing. I mean, there is trashing, it's just not the cards in the deck. Royal Carriage is kind of help with the snow trashing situation. Oh, this is actually an interesting point because Haka flipped into the sand that uh, they knew would be quite terrible, but in order for Tracer to like half turns, they need to flip with the minion anyway. So the like if you know your next five cards are uh not what you want to see, do you just uh leave them? Like, do you just uh, leave that hand as your next turn because your opponent kind of has to flip with minion in order to have a turn? I don't know. It's just me fury crafting minion fury. It's just, no. Yeah. This card has been around in the minion since basically forever. So I'm sure the, the whole minion fury. Uh, and kingdoms like this is very well discovered already. And also, as far as I remember, what well, ends up working pretty well in minion uh, games is uh, just just by province, and hopefully it works out. Um. Is it Mira Hack? I started to look ahead here. Um, I don't know. Does does I'm not sure that Haka looks ahead. I'd say it's just like regular. Like maybe not behind. But they both have five minions. They both have about the same amount of mini grows. Haka has more lurkers. They both have a little bit of royal carriages. And it's just like I think their decks are uh, in about even states, and whoever does more is gonna lose, and whoever does less is gonna win. The lurkers are scary for pilots. Uh, I agree with that. Also. I actually really like the border guards from Tracer. I think those do quite a bit of work here. And just like being able to find your minions or find your other good cards so that you don't have to deal with junk. Oh, Tracer just did not want to play a lurker. Yeah, that's fair enough. This is not a great scenario for Tracer because they're potentially good hand here, which I think has three minions. Uh, is going to uh, get flipped. Oh, now this hand definitely has three minions now. They were really hoping to find a minion with that royal carriage, I think. I wonder if there is a point where you take a throne room, like when you think your deck is consistent enough for the throne room to like actually make an appearance. Hmm. Five are defect border guard. No, is Donald X listening to me? I doubt it. Uh but maybe. Uh no, unfortunately not. I do wonder uh if the artifacts would be a part of um uh, uh like a, a part of more cards because just making five artifacts for a single card uh sounds a little uh like a little much. And when we a lot in a lot of these things in Dominion, like with uh, what are they called? 
uh, there, there was like an effect like this, uh, or they, they weren't really like artifacts and it's not loot. It's not, um, not allies, although there are also examples, right? We have uh, a couple cards that uh, use the same mechanic. It is a little weird that Border Guard is about the only card that uses those artifacts, actually. Uh, there were boons, there were hexes, there's like a couple of cards that use both of those. So yeah, I think most of the effects uh, use this. What set is this from? I don't actually know which set Border Guard is from. That's definitely before my time, or before I started playing Renaissance. Oh, that's relatively new. Yeah, I am surprised that they weren't uh, m more cards that would use the artifacts then. Or, but I guess that's because there were only two artifacts. And uh, I get, and also I don't think the the journey token was uh, much of a success from guilds. Like I, with only three cards, I'm not sure that I've ever. No, actually, I've seen that happen before. Oh uh, wait, journey token is not from guilds. Is it the other one from around that time? Adventures, yes. Yes. Okay. Um. Yeah, this is the issue of like starting to play Dominion in like twenty twenty two or twenty twenty one. Just I I don't know any of the expansions. Um, yeah, journey tokens are uh are kind of cool, but uh, I guess there like aren't really many interactions where uh, both of the like multiple journey token cards are in the game and it, and they interact with each other. Um, I still did not figure out your identity style points, so I think you're good there. And in the meanwhile, we have uh, had the first province and the first duchy too, because a duchy happened uh, and Tracer bought it alongside the province. Okay, fair enough. Um, there's an option. And also Tracer's deck just kind of didn't work this turn because uh, they drew for stop cards. Yay. Love it. Right. Uh, I do wonder are these provinces and duchies because the piles are running low? Is that what's happening? Certainly after this tracer dud, Haka is like, wait, is Haka going for it? it uh, what's going on here? Okay, I. Okay, they just wanted to gain a different card. Never mind. Oh, they're trying to avoid the pilot. I see. Hmm. More journey co token. Would that be more journey token cards, or would that be uh, just more. Uh, more tokens like journey tokens. What is hidden under that? Right. It's a pretty nice uh, uh, thrown a minion for Haka and actually make sure that even if this next hand oh I was gonna say even if this next hand is not good that they can flip them and uh, 
and they can flip the hand and find a minion or like find something good in the next hand. But this is about the hand that you don't want to see on this turn. It's like free cards that you would really want to play, but you don't have a way to continue your turn. Um, so you might have to flip it, uh, Saka, and that would really be quite painful. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, we're just gonna flip for the entire deck and generate like three coins at the end of it. Yes. Is it wait? Oh, two coins. <laughs> oh, isn't that lovely? Guess we can flip again, but the like accomplishes about as little as uh, mm, yeah, that accomplishes about as little as uh, playing the lurkers. Well, these decks are gonna be lucky if they hit eight again, probably. I do think Tracer's deck is still better because the border guards add that ability to find minions uh, in these very uh, full of junk decks. Okay, maybe I'm over dramatic with the, they'll be lucky to hit 8, but I don't think hitting 8 will be consistent from this point on. <sighs> so, yeah. Um, there really isn't that much to, uh, like, I, I wish there was a little more to say about this game outside of, uh, well, they, they flipped a minion and they rolled a not so great hand. I, like, it feels pretty great for like a casual dominion play where you're just like playing with friends hanging out at the table and you're like, Oh no, you flipped me into a free curses and an estate. How dare you? <laughs> and like that kind of thing. Uh like, that sounds actually pretty fun. Um But uh for com like for competitive or like semi competitive things it's uh Yeah, it's a little little less good. Yeah, so here's a question. Do you flip and try to have a turn with like a lot of junk in there? I guess the answer is yes. Like, I, I don't think there are little decisions even on these turns. It's just these turns are a little lackluster uh, or it comes to like planning and so on. Just like you just kind of make the decisions on the fly and you sometimes get lucky, sometimes you get unlucky. Yeah, no. I mean, I think the decisions are interesting because they're probabilistic based too, though. So, um, like, I don't hate the, the way this, this card plays out. It's just, There are plenty of Dominion games that are more interesting than this, uh, to me, at least. Alright, um, and I was assuming Tracer was gonna go hit 8 here, because this is a kind of kingdom when if you can take 8, you take the 8 and you just kind of uh, continue. All right, Haka has said enough of uh, dudding and they're gonna gain a caravan. And Tracer agrees, they also had enough of dudding. <laughs> and they also gain a caravan. So you could buy a copper here and a province, or, or I guess you could call the royal carriage and that would be a lot prettier of a solution. Um. So I guess the question is, does Tracer think they could um, 
get 16 here because that would actually end the game. All right, clearly we're not going on with this hand. Oh, wait. There is a lot of royal carriages on Tracer's Tavern mat. Uh, they could have trashed four cards from the supply. Wait. Wasn't there a way to win the game there for Tracer? Am I crazy? Yeah, I, I feel like there was um, some multiplying lurker uh, into being able to win because they need to just buy one estate at the end of it. Uh, I guess there was... Was there a way to multiply a royal carriage when we knew we drew a good hand? Not sure. I mean, this also might possibly be winning already. But if it isn't... Uh, wait, why is... Wait, why did we go for it, Asaka? I guess Tracer completely misses with the Caravan in play. And the Haka does get rewarded with buying a Copper into uh, a state uh, province. But I thought we were supposed to go for the double province estate because we had a lot of mining roads in place so we could have bought a lot of Coppers to increase our money. Uh, well, uh, that that still went for Haka, uh, even though uh, I think, like, I'm not certain about the play on that second to last turn. Uh, if your opponent does at the crucial time, you uh, you tend to win, especially in these uh, not very consistent games. And uh, hmm. this game a lot more consistent, I would say, with uh, collection again and. Uh, Courtyard is your cheap action that you'll want to be buying a lot. There is village support with city and hunting lodge for it. There is bunny hunter for finning. We have investment for finning as well. If we choose to go that path. Though I'm not even sure that uh, getting an investment is worthwhile here. Is there any reveal effect for patron? I don't think so. I assume hex, one of the hexes has reveal on it. But, uh... Oh, uh, investment reveals, uh... Yeah, investment reveals the hand, but in investment doesn't actually activate patron unless you find a way to play it during your buy phase, which I don't think is in this kingdom. Or uh, during your action phase, which I don't think is available in this kingdom. Um, so investment uh, does reveal the hand, but it doesn't actually activate patron. So there is no patron synergies here, really. I mean, patron's still a good card, um, considering we're going to be playing with terminal draw. I think I would want one of those, probably exactly one. Just so that... Uh, I am uh, not going to do as much. Uh, how can I do this pageant uh, instead? Which, uh, that is really good at uh, hitting price points. Yeah, but uh, or there was a playtester that doesn't like patron. Uh, and you, I don't think you can hate patron. Uh, Uh, that much. Oops, I gave you five coffers. If only there were five patrons in these decks. <laughs> yeah, both players here with uh, early collection buys. I like that a lot. I do wonder if uh, hunt, uh, which one between Hunting Lodge and Courtyard is better. 
or not hunting lodge hunting lodge at city uh not courtyard uh is better because hunting lodge i guess hunting lodge is better early on but as we approach uh Uh, as we approach the time where we have a lot of uh, uh, hunting lodge, I don't know. Like uh, as we approach the time where we have a lot of uh, um, courtyards in the deck, I think city just becomes quite good. I guess hunting lodge uh, uh, it has the synergy which uh, Haka is so nicely presenting for us with the bounty hunter here. Um. Which does look pretty great. So yeah, Hunting Lodge is uh, far better at this stage. And also does have a little bit of synergy with First Mate. Uh, both, or not synergy, but both being drawn to X cards. Um, that like uh, adding more draw to X into your draw to X deck is just pretty good for consistency and you might be playing with first mate just because you might have a lot of the same cards in the deck mostly hunting lodges and courtyards so you might throw one in there at some point I do actually wonder about uh, just buying a lot of collections, buying a first mate, and uh, buying a bunch of courtyards, and you pick the courtyards if you hate your, uh, or if you draw your first mate, or if you uh, have multiple courtyards in hand already. Right. Beautiful draw from Haka, we get to top deck this courtyard. Now, probably right and we get to buy i would be leaning towards buying the second collection now i think we do want a lot of those uh, alongside the courtyard or maybe not even alongside the courtyard maybe just uh, a second collection save a coffer As I just want collections, I think. I guess Haka is behind one hunting lodge. But uh, also ahead uh, on trashing by two and probably soon to be one card. Uh, Sir Martin was enemy of patron. Uh, I'm not sure. Alright. Um. It's a mute. I, I like when cards interact with new things. I, I generally like when cards interact, so... <laughs> no. I was gonna say, here is Hakai. I hope to draw a junk card so I can throw all of this away and... Uh, get more good stuff. Uh, Hakai that's just to get another Hunting Lodge over another collection. It's, it's fair enough. I don't disagree. Uh, though, now that we only have very few stop cards, I think uh, grabbing another collection would be very fitting. The unfortunate thing about Tracer's deck is that the... The second, do you think so? I mean, in this hand, actually, no, I, I don't think it really would be because we play a courtyard, we draw all our money and we buy whatever we wanted anyway, right? In this hand, sure, but, uh, or we can pick, yeah, we can pick these courtyards too. And we can exile the copper and be happy with this hand too, right?
Like, I don't know. I drew all of my money and I bought the things that I wanted. Okay, I didn't get to Finn. Uh, I think I'm okay with this outcome. Of, of, of Haka's turn. Like, okay, I didn't get to play my fancy action cards and draw my deck in a little bit of a more complicated way, but I still drew all of my money and I I played it and uh, I bought exactly the things I wanted. I, I don't think Haka should be particularly unhappy with that turn. I definitely wouldn't be unhappy. I think that, that was a pretty fine turn, pretty great turn, in fact. What I do seek out here for Haka is uh, with free collections, you can actually buy out uh, all of the remaining courtyards. And I think then Tracer has a very tough time coming back on points, as both of you are going to be keeping on buying expensive action cards. And I don't think Tracer can really do the same trick because they're behind on collections, so. If they buy a bunch of courtyards, then they're just going to be behind for a while, and that's just not going to work out great. And you could maybe even exile a courtyard while doing that, so that you get more money or whatever. Or maybe you can just like exile one of the courtyards that you buy as Haka, because uh, you really don't need that, need that many of them. That does still give you money, and uh, it gives you a pretty large point lead that's going to be very hard for Tracer to deal with. Well, no, maybe this is not the moment yet. Uh, you know, uh, Haka was not able to. Uh, build up a large uh, coffer lead either for like a big turn so that is quite unfortunate for them all right and uh the amino tracer is just like i think coming back from a couple of unfortunate turns And uh, yeah, I I think I I seem to be more agreeing in general throughout this match with uh, what Tracer has been doing than what Haka has been doing. It's just a little strange because I do play with Haka quite a bit more than with Tracer. Uh, so yeah, that that's a little. Awkward, but maybe I'm just like paying more attention to Haka than uh, paying to Tracer. That is also possible. I don't know if that's any noticeable. Yeah, that not very fast games today. It's uh, it's been uh almost one and a half hours, and we're only in game three. We were on pace for a three ma three hour match as as it is now. There's a little hoping that this would end a little sooner because I really shouldn't be talking all that loudly uh, in about one and a half hours from now. Uh, so I might have to try to figure something out uh, if uh, the match goes that long. I could also just tell Haka to hurry up. <laughs> that would also help. Uh, we talked to Courtyard. I ASMR commentary. No, I hate that. I absolutely despise ASMR. I no. <laughs> no, I I'm not doing that. I refuse. No, Donald X thinks that I'm doing ASMR commentary. Great. <laughs> Thanks, whoever you are. Uh, is that the uh? It's not DZ, right? right. It's, oh no, DZ is not watching it. You're DZ. Okay, thanks, DZ. Uh, I 
Alright, um, back to the minion, uh, we have, um, is this going to be the, the play that, uh, I was, no, the, we have a city, um, sure, I don't mind having a city in my, uh, in this deck. I only figured it out because I am peeking at Discord from time to time, and I saw you watching the, uh, listening to the game in Discord, and did didn't see you in spec chat. So uh, that is the only reason. I'm also not great at figuring out things, and especially in the evening. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> um. Tracer still fairly behind on collection points, fairly behind on finning. It it's not over over because Haka could just draw a terrible hand. And then uh, I think we have a game, but it does look pretty difficult to come back from for Tracer. This is slightly inconvenient to think about these decks. If you play a courtyard last, you, you have to top deck something. And if you play a village last, then you're floating two actions. There's no cantrip to smooth on this out. But I guess there's a courtyard, uh, which I would assume Haka is going to exile here for more uh, money. Right? I would like to have 12 money this turn rather than nine. Nine seems like a pretty low number. It seems like a winning number still. And it does because you just buy double uh, collection, double courtyard or whatever. You know, but 12 looks very, very fancy. You just they get to buy the fifth collection and another city. And this is a kind of draw that you don't really want to see as Haka. But then again, like if Haka pigs every single action that's in their deck, they draw um, at least three collections and sometimes two coppers. It's not exactly the worst outcome. <laughs> And also, if they pick most of the actions in their deck, they eventually draw a city, uh, unless they, I, unless, suppose that they, they could, su uh, I suppose, draw five treasures. But like, if they draw any of their villages, all of their villages do very good stuff for this turn. Both city and. Uh, um. And hunting lodge. Or they could draw a hand like this. Uh, yeah, that that is a hand you could draw. I think I would be tempted to just buy two action cards, like two caravans, just for a little bit of points. The city does uh, feel a little safer, and I think we're just like far enough ahead, uh, so that we can afford to play a little safer. Oh, and I guess you can weigh of the pig as your final cantrip, right? Right. Hmm. Or you could just leave that action on top, and that's better. Okay. Tracer's deck at its full power. Uh, but Tracer also knows that Haka can never dud in this position. Because he's seen five of the seven treasures in Haka's deck last turn. So, this is some like worst type of dud because 
like Haka was ahead enough so that they could dud and then still be completely winning. So that that's the dud that, that that's Haka dudding that takes away uh, hope, any hope of Tracer, uh, any hope of tra Tracer would have at Haka dudding the next turn as well because it's not a kind of kingdom that you can dud multiple turns in a row, which is very preferred for me at least too. Um, kingdoms where you can dot multiple turns in a row because that's awful and terrible and I hate it. Mm, I would assume Haka is going to exile the bounty hunter here. Really don't need the bounty hunters. We also don't really need the courtyard. The courtyard is non-invasive though. We could also be super safe and boring and exile two coppers and just buy two cities or whatever. There's no way to do gain and play in this kingdom, is there? No, not really. So you can't gain a copper and then draw all the coppers and get a lot more money suddenly. Haka chooses to not play the bunny hunter. Okay. I mean, most of the plays are winning, so I don't have any issues with that. But I'm not sure if that's the winningest. Yeah. I mean, most most things are winning. Uh, I would have probably go rid of the copper after seeing that dot lost shuffle. Just like. The only way you lose is that if Tracer just o leaves the pilot blatantly open, then, uh, then you just don't draw the right cards, right? So you want to prevent that situation from happening, Osaka, as much as possible, I think. But then again, like... How does Tracer leave a pilot blatantly open, but uh, on the other hand, doesn't leave it so doesn't leave it so open so that uh, Haka, even on a dud, could uh, win the game. It's a little hard. difficult position for Tracer. I mean, I think you just have to open the door for Haka to be able to pile out. You have 17. Alright, so By a collection and two cities. That's what you can do next turn. Or you could also like throw in a silver and go like up to twenty. No, actually you can go up to twenty, right? With a uh, bounty hunter exiling something. You could also just buy a collection and uh, say. Uh, hey, Haka, you're not going to draw that deck this turn. Therefore, I'm going to win. Um, or a first mate. I think we're playing this safe. Uh, actually, no, this is patrons. Patrons are not very safe. Okay, no, this is setting up a pilot. I like this. Because uh, this is... Um, Tracer had 17 this turn, and then they added 4 more, so that's 21. So they could buy out 4 patrons in a collection. Uh, that does leave the very same pilot open-ish for Haka, but Haka might have to exile cards in order to be able to do that. Yeah, it's still very possible. Uh, how much money is there in Haka's deck? Just like 1 copper... Uh, five collections, that's 11. And there's some number of patrons, which I assume is two. So that's 15. 
So if Haka exiles two cards that are not in exile yet, then uh, they could uh, pile out. Yeah, Tracer's starting hand is awesome, but I don't think they get to play that. I mean, Haka does have to exile exactly two cards, which they can do from here. Exile the Hunting Lodge, exile the Courtyard. Yeah, exile the Hunting Lodge, exile the Courtyard. Uh, Oh, there's only one patron, but there are two coffers. Okay, so that does it. Uh, right. It's 11, 14, 15, 21. Yep. That is uh, 21 coins, and four patrons in collection cost 21 coins. So we can just uh, do that and win. It seems a little awkward from Tracer that like Haka has to do the exact like you maybe wanted to leave a little I don't know that's and Tracer could have had uh, could could have left uh, less of a pilot open but maybe there was no way of how the numbers lined up so because there was no way for them to win uh do we have a server reset all right, and we are back in, and hopefully I can figure out how to merge this this video together so it doesn't have to come in in two parts. Uh, yeah. Uh, there. Anyways, we're back, and we have another kingdom, and uh, also spec chest is high. Just in case, yeah. Uh, all right, and um, the opening pretty simple. Both players went with uh, Sailor Silver. Um, both players are trying to hit five for. It looks like is a Sea Witch. Um, very powerful card here because the trashing is rather subpar. I mean, Sanctuary is a decent trasher, but uh, I don't think quality wise it keeps up with uh, what Sea Witch has to offer here. So I think Sewage has to be the first five, but also Tracer missed five entirely. So uh, that is uh, very sad for them. How come Mr. Sailor is also pretty sad, but I mean, Tracer drew, drew the Sailor turn four, which is about as good as missing it because it still misses the next shuffle. How come buys the Sewage as expected? Tracer hits seven, gets some Basilica points. Um, yep. Uh, oh, right. There is this little sweet synergy of Sailor where it gets to put the Sea Witch right into play uh, when you get it. Which there is a Hyrule in, in Hyrule scenario when that happens. But. Uh, it did not happen for either of the players. Sailor could also put the landing party right into play and take it out uh, off your deck. If for some reason you wanted to do that. Uh, hi, DZ. Um, am I? I am talking. Okay, cool. Mm. Just making sure. Um, Right. Uh, what what happens after the sea witches? I guess is uh, pretty important too. Here, conclave is like pretty awkward with all of the durations that are in both players' decks. Hello, Brippert. So I, I guess if we didn't have five. I, I don't think Conclave is better than Atlantic Party. Atlantic Party is pretty mediocre at best. Right. Haka has more finning in their deck. And they've 
actually like trash the curses, I think. Wait, did Haka trash all of their estates and all of their curses? No, uh, they have at least one estate, okay. This might be their last estate though. I would definitely grab a sea witch here. It, it comes right into play. It, that's so great. And you only have one right now and you have a village, right? It's just so incredibly strong. Yes. Uh, Uh, is, this might be a brain or sea witch because we are going to think about it a little bit, but I cannot imagine clicking any other cards here. Oh my, okay. Well, <laughs> I cannot imagine, but apparently Haka could imagine it and did it. <laughs> um, yeah. They're also ahead enough. To, to the point where maybe it's fine, but uh, yeah, I am not in love with that. You know, oh no, we do have close by, we do have a, a sanctuary, right? Uh, but this hand was very uninspiring. And I kind of wish we sifted away some cards. Yep, punish instantly. Right, well, now it's a good moment for another livery, right? That would be a great moment for a livery, except for we probably have one too many. I still want a livery. Like that. The fact that we have too many doesn't stop me from wanting another one. I'd actually probably buy the other one too. Uh, it is a little sketchy because we're over terminaling ourselves, but we're probably not drawing back the next turn. So that's probably fine. I mean, I. What? Um. Excuse me? <laughs> that is a very questionable village by. I understand this one from Tracer because Tracer does not have one yet. Oh, there's nothing to exile and we would want to... Oh. My, this is just... This is just not great. I, I guess we get to like buy a sea witch and put it into play and not feel bad about it because we're top decking a lot of bad cards and that's that's a way to look at it because as it stands right now we're just not getting out of this situation like we're so we need to buy a sea witch in order to be able to sift past these cards because they're all stop cards <laughs> Oh, maybe livery was an attempt at Basilica points? I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, uh, Haka was pretty ahead at that point, I think, and now um, I think the game is back to even after the delivery buy. I've, I've there, there was one kingdom where uh, I told Nizala that I want to play a strategy that's certain uh, centered about Basilica points instead of building an engine. Uh, and uh, that kingdom, it, the, the Basilica point strategy actually uh, beat Nizala, so I was very proud of that. But there was also like another, uh, another green thing that also gave points, which uh, kind of helped. And, uh, I after I said that the game was about even, then Tracer, uh, I think they did it, but they also resigned, so, uh, yeah, whatever. Yes, classic black market wolf den, but you also have to 
probably play with a black market because the relic is a mean attack. Yeah, I wasn't a fan of uh, that resign. I think I wanted to play on. Oh wait, there is bigger guild hall. Right, 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 right. Uh, well, the question is, do you buy a modify? So that no, there's no way you buy a modify, right? Man, uh, I was trying to envision that, and it just looks like there's no time. Oh, and Haka misses it because they buy a silver on the first buy. Unfortunate. <laughs> oh no, and the wolf that makes the silver minus three points. Alright, the game's over. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> So what you do here is you buy a develop, and if you draw the develop with a silver, you develop it into a beggar innkeeper. Uh, no, it's not reasonable, like, I think. Uh, Haka just, like, missed it, and uh, Tracer showed what the strategy is. Uh, and then the Haka was like, oh shit, I missed the strategy. I mean, I think you buy a develop and you hope that you're... Uh, draws line up, like the develop gets drawn with uh, with that silver or with one of the one cost cards, and then you get to develop into beggars, and hopefully, you hopefully this game continues. You could also just like buy a bunch of beggars as no, you can't buy a bunch of beggars as usual, right? Because you. Uh, you're gonna struggle with uh, uh with being down three points. Hey, right, well. Haka chooses not to play the beggar. That's interesting. Um, well, tracer. Did not sombrero and they found the guild hall and all right so as haka do you buy a second silver here <laughs> it's three points I mean, you need to beat Tracer by two provinces. I, yeah, I don't think that's possible. Oh my god, and Tracer gets to trash a hovel. Oh. And now you have to buy a province as Haka in this position? Because you have a hovel in hand, and there's no way you're going to be able to get rid of that hovel otherwise. Right, we're playing Beggar Guildhall with Silvers. And that's working. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, buy a province, take the tie. Get out of this game. <laughs> we take those. I would be so happy to take the province here as Haka. Yeah, just just end this. <laughs> oh. All right, beggar guilt hole with two silvers. Apparently not so bad. <laughs> yes, apparently good enough to tie, and even had more coffers to end with. No, oh my god, I. 
Ah, oh, why the kingdom? Yes, this is a long one for sure. Unless I, I mean, somebody could find like a strong attack or something really strong with uh with, from black market. Some DLC game with Marshland. I played one, I think. Uh, and yeah, that was in my league match uh, against Fika. Uh, I played the. Uh, a game with Marchland. I don't think we either of us bought a Marchland, but there was one in the kingdom. <laughs> yeah, it really matters on the limited on those limited gain ports. Speaking of, um this board is kind of sort of game limited, not game limited. There, I don't see a plus buy in the kingdom anywhere. I mean, there's plus buy in black market. Uh, yeah, but it's like, there is some limitation on, uh, like there, there's no just plus buy so that you could gain a lot of kingdom cards. So that is going to be limiting, uh, a limiting factor. Fair. It's hard to call any black market. I don't like this archer. Uh, maybe it's just me. But like, yeah, there is a a card that is right next to this archer that also gives you two coins, and uh, it has a better text. I would say. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this archer buy from Tracer. Also not a fan of the silver buy from Haka, but uh I I just want a black market in these decks. <laughs> um did the Haka trash any cards? Oh they trash two coppers, that's unfortunate. For them. I mean, I think I, uh, like if I'm Haka, I'm just flip over the Warlord because I want to get trashing on these estates. I don't want to get into the Warlord buying. I've, I think Haka has way too many estates in, uh, in deck for, uh, in order to, like, before he can turn the game into that. Good call to not pursue. Uh, yeah, uh, this this next hand would be pretty awkward if Tracer did pursue. What does Haka pursue here? Is it is it steward? Because you trigger a shuffle, right? So your steward does not actually collide with the estates. Or well, uh, Tracer is gonna trigger the shuffle for him, I guess. If Haka drew steward there we, they uh, they would be so incredibly happy. As it is now I guess you a little have to And they pursue black market. It's yeah, considering this is a hand that they're you're likely to draw, I think you're happy to uh, pursue a black market. I wonder if your black market whips here as Haka, I think I would be buying a mint. Uh well, you might have to be buying a battle plan. And there is the first black market decision and hmm. Interesting one. Via a fantastic card when it's in the kingdom, not so much when you pull it off black market. Uh, diplomat, it is a village. Uh, 
it does respond to attacks pretty well too, because it activates itself off uh, the archer attack. Right, it what it actually does, it uh, uh yeah, what it, what actually diplomat does it uh, counters the archer attack. Which is pretty nice. And as much as you want plus buy, I don't think the... I don't know, like... I, I do want plus buy too, but a lot of our gains is going to be black market for now, and we're going to find some good plus buy later, I, I would hope. Yeah, here's the moment for Tracer to delete all the coppers. Uh, doesn't do it. This is the unfortunate diplomat draw, too. Wait, why is Haka revealing the warlord? I don't really understand that. Isn't there a real risk of... I, I, I guess there really isn't much of a risk of not hitting 5 here. Why did all the spectators leave? I don't know, maybe something more interesting was going on. Um... I feel like, oh wait, oh no, uh, Tracer rotated away from, <laughs> I don't know, I, I, well, I know that I, I won't be doing it because I probably don't have the same, uh, uh, same kind of news that, that you guys do, uh, is, I assume news in Poland or, uh, very, very different. Um, more server woes? It could be more server woes. It has been a problem. Hmm. I was interested in the Sculptor card. I guess that card is quite nice for being able to uh, have plus buy very cheaply. Right, how do we, like, what do we get here as tracer? So I don't really want a lot of these kingdom cards. Is it just like trash two and more black markets? On the other hand, like I guess uh, the kingdom card that I do want more of is the Warlord. Lost City Black Market. That is also a combination of buys. I don't know if I'm that happy with it. I guess I do want to keep the coffers. Oh, uh, Tracer goes for first mate. I guess it is justifiable of two black markets in the deck. Sure. Uh, but uh, yeah, this it doesn't look that hot in this kind of hand. Uh, yeah, Lost City is very, very good. I mean, I just want to see more black markets. It's just, like, I want to see a lot of black markets being played. Lost City is great, but it does give your opponent a benefit, which is kind of counteractive with you trying to attack them with an archer. Yeah, Tracer's turn. Not great. 
Hmm. Yeah, no. Like, I don't. Not a fan of this archer stuff still. Oh, there is relic. That that is a mean attack. Yes, let's go. That is so much better of an attack than an archer. That also stacks with archer. All right, and Haka is finally going to buy a warlord. I assume. Trash to coffers, because coffer is bad. Yep, let's go. And this forces. Oh. No, we're not buying a warlord, we're just revealing it and not doing anything with it. Okay, fair enough. I mean, maybe warlord is just not a very important card in this kingdom. Is that a fury that I can defend? Mm, maybe. Oh, this is a very awkward draw for a chaser. Because they can't ever play anything that they buy off black market. Because... Uh, the only the only way to get your village in hand consumes an action the threat of i mean well here's the question that i have is the threat of warlord important at all so if black market filling these decks uh, i feel like warlord really does not pose much of a threat I don't know, like, I mean, maybe Warlord poses a threat to Tracer, because Tracer has not rolled a village yet, but then there is First Mate. Uh, it poses very little threat, threat to Haka with uh, having a Diplomat already in the deck, which is another village. It's not going to be all that easy to activate it. Uh, actually, as I say that, uh, Haka is going to activate it here with uh, playing this black market. I assume you just play the first one, you see what happens, you see if you want to play the coppers. Yeah, this board is pretty sweet, actually, like, black market uh, is really nice for... Uh, um, clashes boards. Just, um, it makes them a lot more, uh, more, more pleasant because you do actually get to build a lot. And I do like my building. And Hack, I got, uh, a very nice plus buy card. Although not so nice here, because you're not buying... Like, most of the things you're buying uh, in this deck are not actually being bought in the buy phase. So, not ideal there. Drawing in the lost city. Yeah, understandable. Meanwhile, Tracer just like misses again. And Tracer's draws have been unfortunate. Uh, they've drawn terribly for two turns in a row, so I wouldn't be surprised if uh, they were lost. Uh, the first mate, yeah, the first mate buy was a little early. I, I agree. Their their deck was very much not in control yet. Mm, yeah.
Alright, uh, Hakarel Carriage is the Merchant Guild. That's very interesting to me. Oh, also, there is a trail. Let's grab a trail. Right? Right, right. Probably not, actually. This is no discard synergy in this deck. Eh. It'll work. I'm cer I'm certain. Uh, Haka chooses to grab a village. Sensible. That's it's the reasonable thing to take. Betrayal was like a lot more fun thing to take. So. I I don't actually know about this. Ooh, that's spicy. Yeah, uh, as if Tracer wasn't having enough duds. Then yeah, the that one I think locks it out. That's it. That's the best gatekeeper that I think I've ever seen. <laughs> that is such a good gatekeeper. It doesn't make you dud, but it shuts the um, shuts Tracer's ability to get cards in the deck down. Because anytime you you try to buy something off a black market. Your all of your cards that are in your hand will go back onto your discard pile or back on onto the top of your deck. Is that how that works? How does this card? How does this card read? Oh wait, no, it ever any type. No, that's uh, haunted wits that I'm thinking about. Yes, the the card that I actually uh, learned to despise. Anytime you buy something off a black market, it goes whew, into exile, so... Mm. Yeah, Gatekeeper is still nasty. Not quite as nasty, though. This Tracer has to buy a pair of contracts, which probably they didn't want. They probably wanted a bazaar instead. Oh my, oh, that card's gross. Uh, Margrave card. Oh, yeah, get it out. A legionary might be better here, though. It is no way. There's no way anything's better than a Margrave, right? <laughs> like, God, that card's gross. All right, there, there, there comes the Margrave. Yeah, are we ready to get rid of this archer yet? <laughs> I'd like to see this archer go. Definitely removing those coppers, right? Right, Haka? Yeah, alright. Uh, the anti dot technology. Alright, Margrave, honestly kind of fair, kind of playable, because as long as you have one of those cards, it's fine. And a bustling village. Alright, Haka hit all the villages of a black market. Oh, and now targeted discard into the Margrave discard. Uh, Tracer has to hit VP. I don't know if VP even helps that much. Like a lot of the VP here is uh, Vineyard. And Haka has enough plus buy to buy a lot of Vineyards, so like I not sure where Tracer is going to be able to uh, use the... Ah, what am I trying to say? Uh, I'm not sure what kind of VP card from the black market is going to be better than uh, uh, Vineyards here. What would be really good is uh, some mean attack card, uh, but uh, Tracer chooses to pass on uh, both of the mean attack cards that uh, 
showed up there. And hopefully Tracer's deck is finally going to be in control after this turn, when they've contracted the Lost City. <laughs> and a Steward. Um, what does Warlord read? Uh, until then, can play an action. Okay, so you can play any amount of contracts, it just limits your ability to play actions. Is Haka going to dot here? Uh, yeah, if Warlord could block coffers, that would be very, very mean. Yes, true. Alright, well, Haka still ha has had less dots than Tracer this game. And uh, I think I'll just play a Gatekeeper. Oh, wait, no, that's not a dot. <laughs> nope, we're still going. And we play the Margrave. Alright. Uh, Tracer is done with this. Haka wins uh, 4 to 2. Is that. Uh... Uh, is that right? I think so. Right, it's a great opening for the season from Haka again. Uh, the two-time champion. I, I think Haka is a defending champion, right? I I haven't paid uh as much attention to the the last season. All right, well that'll be it for me. Uh, thank uh, you all for tuning in into this uh match that uh. Uh, has been uh, um, split into into two parts, and hopefully, uh, we I'll, I'll be able to put up the recording uh, pretty soon. Uh, anyway, uh, see you next time. Bye.